Hello, I'm Diana Harrison, Assistant Director of Business Relations in the Employment Management Services Office, or what we call EMS at CCU. Today, I'd like to go over interview tips that I've learned over the years that will make sure that you stand out to an employer during your job interview so that you can land that job. Some of this information may seem basic, but trust me, we've seen it all, and we want to be sure that you are not the reason to add a tip to this video. I'd like you to keep in mind three things as we talk about each topic. First of all, congratulations, you have an interview. You've passed the first hurdle in the hiring process. Second, be memorable for the right reasons. And third, keep in mind the employer's perspective at all times. Okay, let's get started. It's important to make sure that you have a professional resume for any job that you are applying for. The internet is chock full of examples and templates, but EMS has literally looked at hundreds of resumes. So save yourself some time and go to the EMS resource page to see resume examples, watch helpful videos, and load your own information into one of the templates provided to ensure that you have a professional resume. Most likely your interviewer has read your resume and possibly has a copy in hand, but you should always have one to two copies of your resume with you when you arrive to the interview. Let's talk paper. Believe it or not, even the paper you print your resume on will help you stand out in a stack of resumes. Stop by the EMS office the day before your interview to have your resume printed on professional resume paper. Before you print, have someone triple check that there are no errors. Now is the time to shine and look professional. So we suggest that you use a padfolio to carry your resume into the interview. Padfolios can be found at any local office supply store, thrift store if you're on a budget, or borrowed from EMS in a pinch. They will keep your resume flat and wrinkle free, and they have a place for paper and pen should you need to take a note during your interview. Moving on to first impressions. Arrive 10 to 15 minutes early to your appointment to ensure that you are not late to your interview. You do not want to be late to your interview. Make sure that you know how long it will take you to get to the location during the time of day that you are scheduled. Next, you've probably heard the old adage, the first 45 seconds makes the first impression. I'm here to tell you that in the day of microwaves, emails, text messaging, and Instagram, that this time has jumped to even shorter, and in my opinion, starts at the front door. Your interview actually starts before you sit down with the interviewer. Do you know who holds the real power in the company? It's the front desk person, also known as the gatekeeper. He or she can, and probably will, give their first impression of you after you leave your interview. So be positive, no negative stories about how boring your last class was, or that your dog ate green Play-Doh and you were up all night. Introduce yourself to them and ask them how their day is going. After all, they could be your next coworker. While you wait for your interview to start, you should wait calmly and look excited about the possibility of working there someday. Don't forget about your cell phone. Turn it to airplane mode, turn it off, or leave it in the car completely. Everyone knows what that vibrating sound is in your pocket or purse. Or worse, that you have the sound turned on. It would not be good timing for grandma to be texting you every emoji that she finds cute on her new phone during your interview. Now let's talk about the all important how to dress for your interview. Yes, I know I will step on toes and you will be thinking, but I want them to know the real me. This is the real you, the real you that needs a job the real you that has landed an interview, and the real you that wants to show the interviewer that you have respect for them and their time. Take your dress seriously and err on the side of conservative. Remember, be memorable for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. They're interviewing your talents, skills, knowledge, and fit for their culture, not your sense of style. A good rule of thumb is that if you think it might be distracting, don't wear it. Here are a few helpful tips to keep in mind when dressing for your interview. Dress just above the job that you are interviewing for. For example, if you're interviewing for a job at a rec center, wear slacks and a nice shirt. If you're interviewing for an accounting internship, it's best to wear a suit. If you wear pants, make sure that your socks match your cuff. Gym socks will stand out. Well, like gym socks and show your maturity level for the ability to dress yourself. Blacks, grays, blues, creams, and whites are safe colors for both men and women. Bright colors should be worn sparingly. And lastly, conservative makeup, hair, and hairstyles are memorable for the right reasons, whereas overdone makeup and hair can stand out for other reasons and may distract from the overall interview. Here are the do nots for interview dress. Do not wear jeans, no exceptions. 
No hats, no exceptions. Piercings should be kept conservatively to the ears, especially the more professional or above entry level the position is. Cover your tattoos. The person you're interviewing might have a tattoo or two, but they're already hired and you're not. So just do it. And lastly, make sure you cover yourself. No plunging necklines, no skirts higher than three inches above the knee, and it's best to keep your shoulders covered as well. Now that you're prepared for the interview, let's step into the interview itself. During the interview, you'll want to be sure to shake hands with everyone in the room confidently, firm but not over the top, and no wimpy fish handshakes. Sit up straight and slightly forward to show interest in the conversation. Make sure that you make eye contact with everyone in the room. And if you get nervous and start fidgeting, grab your pet folio and hang on. Be sure to answer questions using the STAR method, which will help you answer questions informatively, but not ramble on or get off topic. STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result. More information about the STAR method to answering interview questions can be found on our website. You should have three to four questions prepared for when they ask the famous, do you have any questions, question. It's completely unacceptable to say, no, I don't have any questions. Write your questions on your Padfolio paper ahead of time, and you'll be safe. After the interview, you'll want to shake hands with everyone in the room again and thank them for their time. Request a business card if necessary, and two hours after the interview, send a thank you email. Be sure that your thank you note has no typos, no slang, and no emojis. Triple check your email before sending. It's also very important to double check and make sure that your voicemail is set up professionally and that there's room in your inbox for the employer to leave a message. You don't want to miss the call to set up another interview or even better, offer you a job. Great job. You're ready for your interview.